Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to solve complex circuit problems. So I'm going to be breaking this up into two parts. This is the first part. And when I say a complex circuit problem, I'm talking about something kind of like this, where it's a combination circuit where you've got parallel sections and then you've got series sections as well. So I've got strategies for this in terms of making it simple in a stepwise fashion so you can learn how to tackle these problems and be totally good with them. So let's talk about the first strategy here. So it says redraw the circuit here to be in a mostly linear path, ignoring corners. Start and end on the beginning and ending of the power source. Reduce corners. All right, so let's say you were going to take your thumb and your index finger of your left hand and grab this part of the power source and imagine you can take these wires and just kind of stretch them out more or less in a line. And then let's say, imagine you grab the other end of the wire that would attach to the power source and you would stretch it out to the right hand side. So you would be stretching out this circuit in a more linear fashion. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So you're starting from one end of the power source and you just visually go along and think about what's happening until something interesting happens. So for this right here, we can ignore these corners. These corners are kind of irrelevant for what we're doing. The charge just travels along the conductor and we can, for our purposes, ignore the corners. Then the current comes to a resistor. And so this is gonna be our resistor A. So we need to show that. So we go ahead and show that. Then you follow along with your eyes and just say, well, what happens next? What happens next is a junction where you have a split of the current going in two different pathways. And this is actually an important event. We do need to keep track of that. So we are going to show that split right here because if you think about it, effectively we've gone from a series part of the circuit to a parallel part of the circuit. And that's why this junction is important. There are other implications as well that we'll talk about. And then you just continue with your eyes and you say, well, what happens next? Well, what happens next is that we have another junction as the current flows throughout the circuit. And this junction is where the two pathways are going to come together. And we need to keep track of that. So we're going to draw our next junction over here. Then you just follow along with your finger or your eyes and you go to the next interesting thing and so right here we've got another resistor right here d and then in series we've got a second resistor e and then we have the end of the circuit so let's take a look at how we would draw that this is all in series d e and the end of the circuit and i'm going to label this as line one and i want to point out that this is the circuit that we started with and this is a much simpler visually a much simpler structure to work with and it's going to help us to understand what's going on in a straightforward way. So if you're in a physics or an AP physics class, you may be asked to do these as problems. I would recommend at the very beginning that you leave plenty of room because we are going to have to label these different parts of the circuit with different labels. So we need quite a bit of room for these types of problems. All right, let's continue and see how this goes. So our next major strategy we're going to follow is solve for the equivalent resistances and continue doing so until you have the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit. So let me show you what that means. So we had this up here and we are going to start to simplify this into an even more reduced circuit. So we find the equivalents for different parts of the circuit and we take it one step at a time, just one step at a time. In other words, we're going to go from line one to line two and in that process, I can combine these two resistors into one resistor over here. This is the equivalent resistor B-C, which is the equivalent resistance of this over here. And I can combine D and E together. They are going to be combined as series resistors, and that's going to be really easy to do. I'll show you how to do that as well. So we take it one step further, going from step one to step two, or line one to line two. And we're going to have to calculate the equivalent resistance here now and the equivalent resistance here now. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. So first of all, this is the equation you're going to use for working with resistors in parallel like B and C are. And so we're going to continue and say, all right, I'm just plugging in my numbers here. But notice that we're going to have to take the inverse 1 over 1.5. And that turns out to be this decimal. So I've gone from essentially kind of like a fraction to a decimal here. I've done the same over here. And now I am ready to add these two numbers together. And I want to give a heads up. This is a common error where students will make mistakes. They will say, ah, the equivalent resistance of BC is actually going to be 1.238 ohms. And that is incorrect. We still have to take the inverse of that. 
that means we're going to have 1 divided by 1.238, and we end up with our equivalent resistance over here. And so I need to keep track of that. So on my paper, as I would do this problem, I would keep track of that and just be aware that there are a lot of things to keep track of. So just try to be organized as you do this, because otherwise it's easy to get lost or lose your work at various points. All right, so what about this equivalent resistance right here when we're combining series resistors? How do we go about doing that? Well, that's pretty easy. All we're going to do is add those two resistors together in terms of their equivalent resistance. So it's just going to be the sum of those two numbers. I've gone ahead and recorded that over here. So we end up with our work done in a safe place. And that is how to get from one to two. Well, what about a third step here? because we will need to get the entire circuit down to one equivalent resistance. And there are reasons for this, but just follow along with the strategy for now. How would we go from step two to a step three, or line two to a line three? What do you think? Well, we're going to do a similar thing that we did with D and E combining into this equivalent resistance over here. All we need to do is effectively add these resistors, because they're all in series, just add them together and you end up with the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit. And this is probably going to answer a problem for you. In other words, a lot of early problems that you'll see when working with combination circuits are going to involve solving for the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit. And that's what we've gone ahead and done. So these are the intro skills you'll need to know to be able to solve problems like this. But we're going to step it up a notch in part two. So I'm going to show you part two, and I'll put a link up to that in the upper right right about now. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. And please stick around for part two.